Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, and today we are continuing on with our series Spring to Production. The idea behind this is we talk a lot about how to build applications in Spring. We don't talk enough about how to get those applications into production. So what I've done is I've created a simple project called the Spring Blog, and I'm going to take that and push it to production using a variety of platforms. We've previously done a video on how to push this code into Microsoft Azure's cloud, more specifically Azure Spring Apps. Today I want to take a look at kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, not the enterprise side, more of the personal project side. I have this personal project I'm working on, I want to go ahead and push it up somewhere, maybe I even want a free tier that I can just get started with. Uh, so Railway was, was suggested, I threw something out on Twitter, I asked a bunch of people, what, what are your favorite platforms to push your Spring Boot apps to? and Railway come up a couple times, and so I thought this would be a good chance to check it out. So here we are on railway.app, bring your code, we will handle the rest. Uh, what I like about this, made for any language, uh, for projects big and small, Railway is the cloud that takes the complexity out of shipping software. So right away, uh, really love the homepage here, beautifully built, a whole lot of information about uh, what you're going to get here on rail, Railway, um, some features, uh, first class features. Uh, I really love, again, uh, start or extend your infrastructure with one click. You can choose a template uh, from a selection of production ready applications, there's 75 plus, and there's a whole bunch of really nice things said about it on here. So at the top, what I want to focus on first is pricing. And with the pricing, you'll see that there is a starter. So there's a trial, fit it with the platform, uh, SANS credit card. So you get 512 megs of RAM, a gigabyte of disk space, and then uh, $5 or 500 hours of usage, whatever comes first. And there is community support with this, documentation and a Discord community. You can actually move up to the developer platform, which is still free, ditch the limits, still free under $5 you can see those limits kind of go up. Um, and then $20 a seat and you get a whole bunch of you know, uh, limits. So uh, for $20 a seat, that's not a lot uh, of money for what you get there. I'd be interested in starting to compare that with other ones as we go through this process, but that seems like a really good one. What I love is just the free tier, the developer tier. If you have a project like a blog that maybe is not gonna make a ton of money, and you need somewhere to host it, this seems like a very viable solution. And you know, on top of the pricing, as you see as we'll go throughout this um, tutorial here, it's very easy to use. And so we like you know, things like being able to connect a GitHub account. And I don't have to deploy anything, it's actually gonna take my source code and uh, create an artifact for me and deploy it to production. So all around are really great uh, platform so far. Uh, so what I want to do now is jump on in and in case you are not aware, here is the repository for the code that we're using. Uh, so Dan Vega slash spring blog. We are constantly trying to kind of improve this application. Really just started out as a, you know, a small REST API. We're not trying to do anything fancy here, just kind of having a, a bunch of different features and we want to just use this to deploy to production. So if you want to go ahead and check out the repo, you can do so there. So one thing I want to point out here, if you were following along with the last one under source main resources, we had a uh, application dash Azure YAML file, and this was to kind of host all of the configuration for the Azure database. Uh, I'm going to add, I've since added an application dash prod, so this is gonna be our production environment. I think I was gonna have a different configuration for each platform we kinda of moved to, and I since thought about that and decided that there's really no point in it. What is changing from environment to environment or platform to platform is just the uh, data source settings, right? We're connecting to a database, so we need to change those settings. So we have one prod file, this Azure one will probably go away in the future, but this is the one prod one that will change in every different environment. Um, so with that, uh, if you wanna see the code and want a little bit more of a deeper dive into the code, you can check out the first episode. Again, I just wanna focus on uh, Railway today and how to get this code into production. All right, so once you have signed up for an account on Railway, you can log in and head over to the dashboard. You can see here I am on that starter plan. I've used a little bit of it, not much. 
Uh, but here is the dashboard. I have no projects in my system right now, and we're gonna start fresh and create a new project. So it says here, create a new project. You can deploy a GitHub repository, provision a database, or create an empty project to start from local. So I'm actually going to start with an empty project because I want both a database and a GitHub repo. So I'm gonna start with the empty project and I'm gonna start with the database first. So we wanna first create a new service. So I like this, you come in here and you can add a service. You can do command K to get this little command palette. So we are going to say a uh, new service here and we are going to create a database and we are going to create a Postgres SQL database. And so you see that this is getting created. So once the database is created, we can go into it. Uh, you will come back to this, but you have the ability to go ahead and create your tables here. We're actually gonna use the schema generation in Spring Boot to go ahead and generate the schema for us. Um, but once that's created, you can see the tables, you can alter them here. You can also come in and, and go ahead and query against them, which is nice. Uh, you can go ahead and look at the connection information here. You have some logs, uh, variables. This will point you to all of the things that you need to know. So what I wanna do is actually copy some of this stuff right now. So the first thing I'm going to need is the host. So I'm gonna come in and copy this. I'm gonna head over to the repo. In the repo, I just wanna show you this. So we have this application dash prod. This is our production environment. These are the things we need out of it. So we need a host, a port, a database name, a database username, and a database password. These are the different environment variables that we're gonna need. So we don't store these directly in here as plain text, that's a bad idea, because that will get committed to Git and then write in plain text for everyone to see. So we set those up as environment variables and then we can substitute them at runtime uh, with the appropriate values. And the way that we're doing that here is if you look in the readme and go down to railway, we have this uh, these different properties that we're gonna set here. These are all the environment variables that we need to set in railway. Now you could do these one by one, or you can just copy whatever's in here. So I'm gonna fill in these values, and then we can copy whatever's in here, and there's a uh, basically an environment variable editor so that you can copy and paste one big chunk of settings instead of doing them one at a time, which I find really nice. So what else do we need? So we have um, our profile, which is going to switch us to the production profile to use this uh, YAML file. So we have the host, we need a port. So let's check out what the port is. We're gonna copy that and we'll put our port here. We know that by default, the prod DB name is railway. I, I haven't figured out a way to change this yet. I wish there was a way to customize this. I would like to call this spring blog, but uh, no big deal for now. We need a password. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna look at our password and we're gonna copy this. And again, I'm gonna change, I'm just gonna delete this after I'm done recording this, so no big deal. And then the username should be Postgres, user Postgres, right? So we have everything we need here. We can go ahead and copy this and I'll show you where we're gonna need this in a second. So we have our Postgres database here. The next thing we need to do is add a new service. We need to come up here and say new and we're gonna say from a GitHub repo. You can go ahead and connect to your GitHub repository and figure out which repo you're gonna use. I'm gonna use that spring blog repository that we talked about and it's gonna go ahead and set up this project. I'm gonna go in here quickly and it's gonna build this. So it's gonna build this and deploy it without the environment variables. It's not going to work, right? So we wanna come into variables. I told you you can go and do this one by one or you can come into the raw editor here and just paste this in. So we are setting the um, active pro profile to prod. Here is the host, the port, the database name, the password and the username. If we go ahead and update these variables and come back to deployments, you'll see that a new one is going to kick off uh, and kind of rendering the old one obsolete. So we don't really care about this one. Uh, we care about this one. So what I'm gonna do is through the magic of video editing, we are gonna jump ahead to when this one is done building and we'll see if it worked. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, we have a success here. Let's jump into it. It should uh, start to show us the logs. So you can go through the details of 
the actual uh, what happened here. Here's the build logs. Everything looks like it went fine. We have the deploy logs. You can see that it's starting up. It's using the following profile prod because again, we set that environment variable for the active profile to be set to prod. And uh, you can kind of see anything that's uh, going on here. So we can kind of scroll over, or can we? I don't think so, there we go. Um, and so we should see that this application is started up. Now, with this as a success, if you had problems, you would see them in here, so this is a good place to kind of start. If we go over to settings, we have some things here that I wanna look at. So first off, in the environment, we have this automatic deployments. So this is great. Uh, in the previous one that we did with Azure Spring Apps, we had to hit, we had to basically set up a GitHub action uh, to kind of handle automatic deployments for us. Here, Railway is doing this for us, and it's saying, "Hey, anytime you make a commit to master or maybe a PR, um, and you merge that PR in, uh, we are going to automatically deploy that new version for you. If you don't want that to be the case, and you want to do it manually." then you'll want to disable this trigger. Uh, the next is, hey, we need to expose this service to the public internet. So you can generate a quick domain, they'll just kind of generate one for you, or you can set up a custom one. Obviously, if this was a real project, you would set up a custom domain, but I like this ability to go ahead and quickly generate a domain so that we can just test this thing out, and we'll come back to this in a second. So then you have your service here. Uh, this is the service name, this is the repo it's pulling from. You have information about your build. So this is using something called Nix Packs. I was not aware of Nix Packs until I got into this. Uh, so there, there are some deprecated features here for like Heroku build packs or Paquito build packs, uh, but it's using Nix Packs. And it's the first time I've used it. I found it to work very well. Uh, I haven't, I don't have to change anything. It just figures out that I'm using uh, Java and Spring and it just works. So that's really great to see. Then you have some information about your deploy and then danger if you wanna go ahead and remove that. And then you also have metrics here and we looked at deployments and variables already. So now that I have this domain name, I should be able to click on this and we should be able to go visit our application. So this is a good sign. Uh, we're getting a white label error page. This is because we haven't set up a path for the route. If you are having issues and you didn't configure something right, maybe you didn't set up the data source correctly, you would come to a railway error page. And then you can go basically jump into the logs that we saw before and maybe get some information from the council to see what's going on. This for me is encouraging. This tells me that we're on the right path. So we're gonna go to slash API slash posts. And there we go. So we have a post in here. We have a couple of comments. We have a particular author. And the way that this is coming up is in our application prod, you can see that I have the SQL init mode turned on to always. Again, you don't want to do this in production. I'm just doing this for demo purposes. Uh, we have a, an issue in this uh, particular repository to uh, add Flyway. Um, and so that will kind of clean some things up, uh, give us database revisioning, a whole bunch of things. So we'll get to that at some point. But right now I'm just initting this using this schema so that I don't have to connect to this database and then set the schema up manually, which you could do. Um, but again, this is more of a demo, so I don't mind turning this on. And then in the application, we have a uh, command line runner. This is just for dev and prod. And I did this in prod because again, I don't wanna just go manually enter in some data. I just wanna make sure this is working when we go ahead and launch it on a new service. So I had a new uh, author, I had a new post and a couple of comments, and that is the data that you're seeing here. So that tells me everything worked. Uh, again, pretty easy to get going. Uh, we added a Postgres database, we added a project. If these are the kind of things that you're building, and especially, I think, because of that free tier, if it's kind of personal projects that you're working on and just want to get something out into production, Railway is a really great option for you. And even then, I don't have anything running on their paid tier yet, but the the tier looks generous. It looks like you get a lot with it and for not a lot of money. So I think this is a really good option. I'd be interested to hear from you guys out there if anyone is running their projects, uh, their spring projects on Railway. 
Uh, I'd be interested to hear how your uh, experience has been. Uh, but again, just wanted to introduce you to another service, another platform to push your projects to. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to go through a bunch of them, just seeing how we can take these simple projects and get them out to production. So, hey, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And as always, friends, happy coding. Here we go, here we go, here we go.